Plus Gary Fox and tonight we're going to uh, have a little fun with that 4A series. Decided to do a little of that before we get into uh, some more theory and math. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start a program called Odyssey. Odyssey? I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyhow, uh, we're starting it right now. And uh, it's going to come up with a help screen. I don't want it. I know what I'm doing. At least I think I do. And uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, create a new track. And on this track, I'm going to generate a tone. And the first tone I'm going to generate is going to be a sine wave. And I'm going to make it about 100 hertz. That's a pretty nice sound. And we'll do it for about 10 seconds. So here we go. And now we're going to uh, listen to that tone. Okay, we heard it. Now let's go ahead. We'll mute that one. And uh, that was just a sine wave. So we're going to add a new track. This time we're going to add one with another tone, but instead of using a sine wave, I'm going to use a sawtooth, which is one of the waves that we generated last time. And uh, now when we listen to this, I remember the sawtooth had a whole bunch of uh, harmonics. So let's see what this one sounds like. If you notice, uh, you could hear the, uh, the fundamental in the background, but then you had all that kind of buzzing sound on top of it. Okay, now we're going to uh, look at a square wave. See, i got to add a new track. And now I'm going to generate a new tone. And... Again, 100 hertz, but we're going to make this one square wave. With And now let's hear what this one sounds like. Okay, I believe I heard on that one a whole lot more... Um, higher frequency harmonics on that one. But again, it sounded kind of buzzy sounding. Okay, we're going to do one more. And on this one, we're going to generate a tone again. But this time, instead of the square wave, we're going to do the no alias. And then in a little bit, we'll look at what the heck these things look like. This one takes a little time for it to generate. Okay, it's generated it. Let's go ahead and play it. Okay, again, it had a, uh, you could hear the fundamental, but you could hear a lot of buzziness in it. But I don't believe you heard quite as high of frequencies as we did on the first one. So now let's do something here. We're going to uh, expand these. And we can see what the wave shapes were. So the uh, sine wave was just a, it was a typical sine wave. And then the uh, sawtooth was just like the one we generated, except I think ours started high and then it worked its way low and then jumped back up to high. But it's the same general wave shape. And then uh, let's look at these two square waves. The one they say no alias and alias. And I think we can see a big difference there. You see, neither one, including even the uh, square wave, jumped down immediately. It had a little bit of time lag as it was jumping down. Sorry, the sign, the uh, saw, saw, sawtooth wave. Square wave did too, but the one I said it was no alias, you'll notice that it has a, 
a little bit longer time there, so it's got a few few less frequencies in it. And uh, that's why it sounded a little bit more mellow c compared to the first one. Okay, we got a little bit more we're going to work on this, but I've got to uh, stop the video for just a moment, and then I'm going to have to splice all this together. Hello, I'm back again, and this time we're going to show uh, a little bit of how this is actually used in real life. Uh, something I want to let you know, although I'm playing these, uh, these sound files through my computer, when I edit the final version of the video, you're going to actually have the real sound file there, so you're going to get to hear it as close to the way it was recorded as possible. Not through uh, converting to MP3, back to WAV, back to MP3, and uh, all that. Uh, <laughs> doing it the best I can. So anyhow, uh, this right here I recorded. I got the dust off of my guitar and amplifier and there was a bunch because uh, I don't play much anymore and I never was really a musician. It's more of a plunker. But uh, I recorded some sounds off of my guitar. And it's electric guitar and it has some uh, buttons on it that's called distortion. Distortion is basically taking the uh, waveform uh, and clipping the tops off of the waves which turns to make them square waves and that adds a whole bunch of harmonics. So distortion is the term that's used now back in the old days in the 70s and 60s it was called fuzz and we're going to talk a lot about that in the, the future, how that they generate that fuzz. So there's a lot to learn. But uh, right now we're going to listen to the guitar. And first we're going to listen to it with uh, the uh, guitar setting at what they call clean. And what I'm going to do is just play the open strings from the lowest string up to the highest string. distortion. Uh, things are gradually becoming more and more distorted as life goes on, which for us old farts means that uh, we can literally say it sounds like noise to me. Uh, anyhow, joke's over. So this is original distortion. and that's even more. By the way, when I recorded this, I had a really lousy setup as far as being able to record, and I got a lot of feedback, so you're hearing some feedback in there. The feedback is happening not because of the uh, microphone where I placed it. Uh, actually, the guitar amplifier was feeding back to the guitar. I was just too close to the amplifier. settings set to max and I did that uh, so that the highest frequencies would show so you'd hear the, uh, the the harmonics as much as possible okay now we're going to pull up one other file and we'll wait for it to come up here 
Okay, and what we have here, I recorded those same tones like I generated before, but this time I did it with uh, 500 hertz as my base, my fundamental frequency, and you'll see why in just a minute. And uh, we will expand those so we can actually see the waveforms. Okay, and right now we're only going to use, hopefully I click the right button here. Uh, we're only going to use the sine wave for a moment. And we're not actually going to play it. We're just going to look at it. Uh, because 500 hertz is screechy and we just don't want to listen to it. And there is a thing that you have on this audacity called Analyze, and we're going to look at the spectrum. And at the spectrum, we've got what they call, well, anyhow, you will see that it's all primarily at the 500 hertz point, because this is 1,000 hertz, and so we see a spike at 500, and that's it. There's nothing else on this spectrum. Uh, there's a lot of options that you can do on this, and we'll go through some of those in, in the uh, next one. But I kind of wanted you to see what a sine wave is. It's just a one pure frequency. Okay, now, I don't think I really have to unmute it. I just have to click on the one that I want to look at. We're going to look at Analyze again. This time we're looking at the uh, sawtooth wave. And we're going to plot the spectrum. And you see that we have all those harmonics. And they're all spaced out there nice and evenly. Uh, there's the 500, the 1,000, 1,500, so on and so forth. And they go down fairly quick at the start, but then they just keep right on going forever. And by the way, the limit of human hearing is right around 20,000 hertz. So, you know, the stuff here we can't even hear. Ah. Uh, there's a whole lot happens when, when you're uh, doing things digital, when you go from the analog world to the digital world. So one of them is, how do they sample this thing? And you see, I chose something called the Backman-Harris window. That seemed to give me the uh, prettiest results on this. If we go to what they call a rectangular window, we get something that doesn't look near as nice, although it does show the spikes. But it shows all this blotchy area in between. Uh, they got lots of windows that produce lots of different things. And uh, the back, Black Man Harris seemed to be the best one. Uh, and we can change the sample size. Right now it's at 512. If we go on up to, let's say, 4096. All of a sudden, things kind of go to hell. <laughs> so I did the one that gives the results that I want you to see. And so we'll go back to the Black Man Harris one. Okay. And what the problem is with all those different ones is that it's not just that it's what I want you to see. Uh, we're doing a, an analysis and like all analysis, it can lie to you sometimes if you're doing things wrong. So this one seemed to give the best results. Uh, now we'll go to the square wave. I'll mute that just to make sure I don't get two of them at the same time. And uh, we'll do analyze the spectrum of it. And you see that we don't, we no longer have the. Uh, that's the first, second, third. So we no longer have the even harmonics in this one. So it's more defined at just the odds. It also looks as if it has a little bit of different uh, fall there. So let's see, the very first one, the third harmonic's down by 9 dB. And at 30 dB, it takes, uh, we never get down to 30 dB. We'll go back and look at the... Uh, the previous one, you see the very first one went down all the way down to 12 dB. Of course, we started at minus 6, so that would be 6 dB.
below. So you see that uh, this one is dropping. I guess it's dropping about the same because if you subtract that minus six from the top. Okay, we'll go down here and look now at this last one. As we look at this last one, you see it falls off a whole bunch at the higher frequencies. It kind of rounds off right there. And that probably is what's happening on the original distortion that's on the guitar. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other harmonics on the guitar, so I can't analyze those waveforms and come up with anything that's, that's useful to us for this purpose. Also, this completely dies at about 22 hertz, 22,000 hertz, and that is the limit of human hearing, and also this thing is sampled at 44.1 kilohertz, and that means two samples at the highest frequency the humans can hear, which is something that's uh, also done with digital, and that's why it's called anti-aliasing. It doesn't allow anything above 22 thousand kilohertz and uh, that's why it's rounding off that also we'll go back and look at the waves again let's just highlight this one so we can see the two square waves again also because it's rounding off the corners of that we don't have those higher frequencies and again that's probably what's happening on the original distortion We'll be getting into that. Uh, very soon we're heading into circuits, and we're going to uh, do a little bit of analysis on our own. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, this is Gary Fox. Great.